Keep equipment within easy reach. Before encouraging the mother to push, do a digital examination to be certain that the cervix is fully dilated. At the same time, feel the fetal suture lines and fontanelles to assess fetal position and thus the suitability of vaginal delivery. Before delivery, put on sterile gloves and often a gown, mask, and eye shield. Position the patient. The dorsal lithotomy position is desirable because it allows the infant to be pulled below the plane of the mother, which is typically done when the shoulders are delivered. Although not mandatory, putting a drape underneath the buttocks helps maintain cleanliness. Wipe or pour an antiseptic solution over the perineum. Now encourage the mother to push during contractions as when straining to pass stool. Encourage the mother to rest between contractions. If epidural anesthesia prevents the mother from feeling contractions, an assistant can feel the uterus or do tocometry to identify them. Eventually, the perineum bulges and the vaginal opening widens to reveal the fetal head. Before crowning, which is the point at which the introitus surrounds the fetal head at its maximum diameter, press gently against the head. This pressure helps maintain a smooth, controlled rate of delivery and thus decreases the risk of perineal tears. It also helps the fetal head clear the pubic symphysis. Avoid episiotomy whenever possible during routine deliveries. With further descent, as the head begins to extend, place a toweled hand on the perineum and press upward to keep the infant's occiput close to the pubic symphysis and to support the perineum. Apply counter pressure with your opposite hand to help control head extension. The infant's head is then delivered and extends slightly. Slide your fingers around the neck to detect any nuchal cord. A nuchal cord should be pulled out and over the occiput. The occiput spontaneously rotates externally after the head is delivered, and this is called restitution. Position your body to comfortably grasp the mandible with both hands. Then pull downward. Stop pulling when the anterior shoulder is delivered from under the pubic symphysis. Make sure to immediately announce any unusual obstruction to delivery of the fetal shoulder so that preparation for shoulder dystocia can begin immediately. After the anterior shoulder is delivered, pull upward to deliver the posterior shoulder. Then begin an oxytocin infusion. Next, Support the head with your anterior hand and support the infant's body, maternal perineum, or both with your posterior hand. The body often delivers spontaneously after the posterior shoulder. Place one clamp about four to five centimeters from the umbilicus, strip the cord in a direction away from the umbilicus, and then place a second clamp just distal to the first one.
cut the cord between the two clamps. As soon as the airway is accessible, bulb suction the mouth and then the nose. But don't delay delivering a distressed fetus to suction. If the infant cries spontaneously at the perineum and did not pass meconium, stimulate the infant, for example, by rubbing the scalp and abdomen.